So the other day I was consulting my journals and I was looking through ISFJ videos because I was doing a tad bit of research on the ISFJ personality type. And like 200% of the videos said, oh, here are the ISFJ traits. ISFJs are really common people. They will do anything for you. ISFJs are really resistant to change and they hate it when their schedules are interrupted. And I'm here thinking, my ass is over here. You know, he's just a stock photo, but um, somehow I managed to feed him for the past few days or so. Isn't he adorable? I named him Luca, as in Luca the ass. A lot of what was said has some... <laughs> What the heck? A lot of what was said has some truth to it, but I would like to shed a little bit more nuance about the ISFJ that maybe people haven't learned about because they were too busy listening to everything else. So let me give you six traits of the ISFJ based on experience and a little bit of research that many ISFJ videos haven't gone into yet. Will it resonate with all ISFJs? No. Will it apply to people outside of the ISFJ type? Yes. But let me share with you said traits and then you can figure out how to go about the ideas that I have shared. All right, let's get to it. Number 1A. When I made my six traits of the INFJ video, I said that INFJs do a lot of reflective writing. I was wrong. The ISFJ is the type that is likely to do a hell of a lot of reflective writing. The journal, the diary, the composition book, the spiral bound college ruled notebook for like 50 cents at frickin' Walmart is the domain of the ISFJ. The notebook is the place where the ISFJ will formulate and organize their thoughts. This is where they can reminisce about past experiences and the present moment, and they are capable of looking at the past with a certain meticulousness about it. They can have a scarily good memory, but what I don't hear often enough is that the ISFJ has a very rich recollection of the past. Their experiences are not bleak or bland. On the contrary, these recollections have a certain cinematic quality to them. The past is intense because the ISFJ is focused on only a select few moments at a time. But don't be surprised if you hear an ISFJ think about the future because number 1B, the ISFJ is more than capable of looking at possibilities and really the future in general. They might look into the realm of the future with a mathematical, maybe even statistical slant to them. But the notebook is also a place where they are willing to explore different ideas beyond the bounds of the familiar, and this is also the place where they practice the art of developing their personal identity. If they were to take their cinematic eye to the past and reorient that to the future, then they can set aside that statistical lens in favor of the sense of wonder bring back that analytical attitude and they will probably come up with a detailed plan of how they want to achieve what they envision. Number two, you like helping people out, but you are so meticulous and low key about it. You can pick up on what other people are feeling and you even have moments where you can pick up on other people's micro expressions and body language. And as soon as you see that, you already have a 15 step plan in your head on how to help them. And you even have trigonometric formulas on exactly what to do while they turn their back so that you can go in at precisely the exact moment and not mess up their flow. For example, God forbid that you see a crumpled piece of paper on the sidewalk. You'll pretend that you have somewhere to be, and then you'll pretend to stop by to tie your shoe right where that piece of paper is, and then you'll pick up that piece of paper, hide it with your palm facing towards you, and then throw it away in the middle of raising your arms to look like you were yawning. Number three, in an unhealthy ISFJ, you are prone to paranoia, withdrawal, and the need for validation from others because you are extremely sensitive to any change in mood in the social atmosphere and because you haven't put in any time to build your personal identity. This is where I will concede with what others have said about this type in that if the ISFJ does not set healthy boundaries for themselves, they are prone to be at the mercy of whomever they seek to help. They will seek approval for themselves through others, which is a very dangerous place for the ISFJ because there are people who are out to just use people and then throw them away as soon as they don't need them anymore. Well, I mean, I don't really wish this upon anyone in general, but oh my god, like from one ISFJ to another, will you make this easy for me and work on yourself, please? Like, I can't do this for you, and also I have to feed my ass in like two hours. Number four. For a relatively healthier ISFJ, you can adapt to almost any social setting and you just so happen to be really cool with everyone. 
you can fit in with the lacrosse team, the chess club, the anime fandom, the drama class, and the nihilist, and they will be happy to have you on board for some reason. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem is that you have an excruciatingly difficult time forming deeper relationships past the superficial rapport. You might see the rest of your posse become closer as a group, and they might see you as a more intimate member of said group, but meanwhile you just have this weird struggle to accept this or to accept anyone into your inner world. And what was once your group of friends turns into a bunch of strangers in the long run. And that's really unfortunate because number five, Y'all are some loyal motherfuckers. If you happen to be friends with an ISFJ, you've been friends with an ISFJ for a bare minimum of five years. Or at least you have the confidence to know that this friendship or relationship will last that long. Imagine being on house arrest for like two years and then you... <laughs> what the heck kind of analogy is that? I guess I'll roll with it. All right, so you're on house arrest, but the house you have to stay in is like this $20 million mansion with water slides and a home gym and all that. And you can have a chaotic time, but then you have to maintain the place and then you have to keep it clean the entire time. And you can have a platonic friend or two to enjoy it with. This is what it's like to be friends with an ISFJ. Man, that was a terrible analogy. Number six, career choices. Here are some career choices for the ISFJ. Historian, clerical, administrative manager, lawyer, paralegal assistant, photographer, video editor, data entry clerk, professional chef, nonfiction author, creative writer, physical therapist, anything that involves exercising your current cognitive stack as well as provide an opportunity to bring to consciousness your unconscious functions. Notice how I didn't put in nurse. Anyways, uh, hopefully this will help you learn a little more about the ISFJ. I might make a video dedicated to the cognitive stack of the ISFJ, and then that video will be a complement to this one. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully you have a great rest of your week, and take care.